Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we've got some happy mail. So stick around for some swatching and maybe we'll even do a test piece. A while back, I received one, a comment from one of my subscribers on one of my videos about watercolor and it mentioned Mission Gold watercolor. And I talked about how I want to try the Mission Gold so badly, but I really have been resisting the urge because I don't need any more watercolors. I certainly don't need to buy any more watercolors for a while. I'm trying to wait to buy any more watercolor until I've used some completely up. And I'm doing pretty well. I've been using my Regina's watercolors a ton, and these are the ones that I'm going to try to use up uh, first because I see pan, I'm hitting pan. The other one that I'm going to be trying to use up hold of is this mix of Daniel Smith and Windsor and & Newton palette. And obviously I've really hit pan on some of those, but on some of the other ones, I have a really long way to go. The Payne's Gray is almost done. The Quinn Deanna is almost done. The New Gamboge is almost done. I've made a nice headway on the Gray Titanium and the Cascade Green and the Burnt Umber. I mean, there's a lot that I've made good headway on, but there are a lot that are almost <laughs> brand new. So those are probably the two that I'm going to be trying to use up before I buy another watercolor palette, like another big set. I'm obviously still filling in my super granulating watercolor set and you'll still be seeing some hauls to fill in this middle row. <laughs> but I got a few more that are gonna go in there before I do a whole another video on this palette. But that's one that's just gonna stick around. I'm not like using this up. I see this as like a permanent mainstay. I'm really enjoying them that much. Other than that, um, I didn't want to get a whole new watercolor set until I've used those two Regina's and Daniel Smith up completely. But in the meantime, this wonderful, beautiful, sweet subscriber saw that I was still daydreaming about different paints and the Mission Gold set is one of the sets that I was daydreaming about. And she sent me this happy mail. She emailed me at creatingcuteart at gmail. That's where you can always reach me if you want to. And she asked if she could send me some dot cards. So I sent her some dot cards in exchange. We just did a dot card exchange. However, <laughs> the dot card I sent her was about this size with, you know, a few rows up and down of different colors that I have tubes of. And I thought I was being generous until I saw her dot cards. <laughs> Look at all of these paints and how you can see through the glassine how insanely generous she was. Like this is amazing what she did. So I can't wait to try these. And I mean, honestly, I feel like I could scrape these off into half pans and make like a palette out of this. But she didn't stop there. Like this wasn't generous enough to send this level of that's like a dot card. Like look how much paint that's like a full pan. It wasn't generous enough, I guess, that she would send all of this. She sent me her original artwork. This is her own original artwork, and I just think it's so beautiful. Like, look at the gradient. Look at the gradient on the blue to pink to blue to deeper purple, and all of the details on these leaves. Like, oh my gosh, she even gave me bird's nests, little birdies. This is so beautiful. So this is going up on my wall. Thank you so much. But now we have these, so I want to open these with you, swatch them out, and obviously I have enough to do paintings. It's not like it's just going to be enough to do <laughs> swatches. So let's see what we get. She also sent me this really sweet note. And it was just, you know, this handwritten note. And I just could not believe how much she sent me. If you ever want to send me happy mail, you would just email me at my Gmail. And I will give you the, ad the save address to mail me things. So let's crack these open. This wonderful friend from my comments section, from my subscriber subset, uh, sent me, in addition to the 34 set of Magello Mission Gold watercolors in dot form, also sent me these rock pigments, six different colors of rock pigments. And she did warn me in her cover letter, her little handwritten note, that those would be really hard to re-wet. And so I knew I needed, and I mean, look at, okay, look how enormous, this is called a dot card, really? I feel embarrassed at the size of what I sent her, <laughs> even though she was so sweet about it and she posted it on her Instagram. But these colors, you can already tell, are so pretty for the Magello. 
and I will move to them after I do my swatches of these rock colors. But these rock colors here all look very earthy and I'm thinking I'm gonna put some kind of Altoid style palette together for these, even though I made a much bigger palette set for the Magello colors. I just don't think they go together very well and you'll see what I mean later. They're totally different. They could not be more <laughs> different. These rock pigments is what I'll call them. <laughs> you can see she said made from rock pigment, handmade, made from rock pigment. They didn't have any color names or anything and I, so I didn't know exactly what to expect although I could tell like that one on the left is green and this and they just worked very differently. You can tell they're not what you're used to dealing with. They're made from something different than whatever binders, whatever pigment source we're used to dealing with with our Schmincke and you know even Regina's watercolors or Artemis watercolors on Etsy. Different you know small batch watercolor makers these were still different they did take a lot of elbow grease to re-wet once i re-wet them i really enjoyed even just making the swatches they're right up my alley because we're talking about greens which is my favorite color and then of course neutrals which is another favorite to use for me so i really loved the color range i thought there were a lot of beautiful neutrals but it did take a lot of rubbing and dropping water on it and letting it soak and stuff to get the pigment out once it was out, as you'll be able to see when these swatches dry. And I did take my heat tool to dry them at the end because it's hard to see the colors when they're this wet still. I really loved how they dried. They look like they're still moving, even when they're dry. So right here, you'll be able to see what they look like dry. And we'll move on to the Mission Gold swatching. But before I did that, I went to the store and bought these two super cheap palettes, which I'll just write the warm colors and the cool colors I'm going to keep separate in there. I wrote out every color and pigment from the swatch cards that I was given or from the dot cards. So I had all that information here in my Arteza swatch book. And then I just started going about peeling these ginormous <laughs> dots of paint, i.e. freaking full half pans that she just let dry. It was so funny because when we were emailing back and forth, I had sent her, I let my dot card dry for like maybe one day, like overnight and then wrapped it in parchment paper actually and mailed it to her and she got it and posted a painting she did with it on Instagram and thanked me and then she was kind of apologizing or you know saying well yours is coming I swear and I was like I know <laughs> she said I just need to keep letting it dry out and I know it took a long time for her dots to dry out so I I was assuming that's because these are super wet and almost like the honey watercolors that like Sennelier that take a really long time to dry and that is certainly how they re-wet. They re-wet like a stinking dream. They say on their sort of marketing materials excellent solubility. The colors work quickly which shortens your work time. That is true honey. Oh my god it totally it re-wets so 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 fast. But part of that is also, I just try to imagine what this woman went through to try to dry these. Of course, they must have taken just like days and days and days and days of her leaving these five enormous dot cards out somewhere in her house to dry. The effort it must have taken for her to put this together. I just can't tell you how much I appreciated that. So the approach that I didn't, because she sent me so much paint and I'm a stinking watercolor hoarder, which I know is like a brand name of a watercolor seller on Etsy, but it's also something we just sometimes times R and I am, I couldn't waste any of this paint and I knew I wouldn't enjoy just like bringing out the five cards and trying to use them like the cards as a palette. So I did try to rip them off of the cards and as you'll be able to see as I'm doing this and I'm sure it's hurting some of your eyes, it wasn't perfect. I did get some paper on the underside and I started trying to like wet the underside and pinch the paper off that way and that just got a ton of paint on my hands and then I would sort of fingerprint into the, into the swatch book so I wouldn't even waste the paint that was on my finger. Like literally, this is what we're talking about at this point. And so sometimes you'll see me doing that. Like this is an example of me just fingerprinting <laughs> extra paint right into the swatch book because I'm not going to waste it. And that's why some of these were done before. If there was just too much paint on my fingers, too much paint on the palette knife that I was using sometimes, I would just splooch it off right into the journal so that I could use that for the swatches. So I just did my best. There is going to be some paper underneath. I still think it's an amazing thing because I don't care if there's some paper on the bottom. It's pretty obvious if you have paper that's happening. You just pinch it out. 
when you see it in the palette, but it really isn't a problem. I don't care. This is a fun palette. I got the cheapest palettes I could find to put it in just to take the pressure off because in my head, I'm like, you're saving these beautiful <laughs> paints for use in actual pieces instead of just to see how the paints work in a swatch, which normally that is what I would expect from a dot card is just enough to swatch it and just see how the paint moves. So now let's talk about my first impressions of the paint itself. Look how gorgeous these colors are, like just how vibrant they are just in the stinking palette. <laughs> that translated for me. These swatches are super vibrant. They remind me of my uh, Kuratake Gonzai Tombi paints, except those are Japanese watercolors, so they're meant to be a little bit more opaque. And these are just as vibrant as those, but they're transparent, like your typical traditional watercolor. I did notice that in the mass tone of these, when they dried, they were shiny. They and I did some research preparing to do this video to make it like, you know, as close to a real review in scare quotes as I could. And I don't think it has any honey. It has some kind of a proprietary, easy to rewet binder formula. And certainly that's true. It is very easy to rewet. But I don't know why um, when you use a ton of it, it has that shininess only in the mass tone. So everywhere else where there was really any water mixed in, that didn't happen. It was only when I was using the pure pigment. So I wonder if any of you have that happening when you use this set. I was blown away by how many colors, how vibrant they are, and how affordable this set is. On Amazon, it's just over $100 for 34 15 milliliter tubes. That's a crazy amount of paint for that price, knowing how much I pay for like schminka and things like that, 15 mil tubes, especially right now with all the super granulating work that I'm doing, getting a bunch of schminka paints, that is a steal. Now these are not granulating colors. These are very clear, um, super vibrant. I mean, vibrant is a word you're gonna hear over and over and you can see why. Even when they dried, they retained this ridiculously bright, just stunning vibrancy. So I really like these for that. and. You know, recently I've been noticing that I do reach for different watercolors for different effects. And my Schmincke straightforward set is very all of one piece. Like it's not granulating at all. The colors are very muted. It's perfect for layering, but it's not going to be the thing I run to when I want something that's like punch you in the eye vibrant. I've been using my Regina's watercolors for that. And I could definitely use these for that. Um, just like I could use my Gonzai Tombi, except these, like I said, are transparent when you add water, whereas the Gonzai can be um, opaque, as is somewhat intended by the type of watercolors they are. So I was just stunned by how beautiful the color range was. I remain stunned by how affordable it is. I've just been resisting buying these because it's 34 15 milliliter tubes, which is a load of paint and I already have so much paint from so many different brands which is one of the reasons this wonderful subscriber saw me basically talking about that that this is one that I just kind of watch and think about but I haven't bought yet and by the way the same thing goes for the White Knights the Roman Schmall those are other brands that I just have watched but haven't tried yet because I feel like I want to wait to get a set again until I've used up some of the sets I already have. I don't want to just collect and collect and collect and have watercolor piling up that I don't use. I want to use what I have. And my long-term ultimate goal is to use up almost everything I have and then only restock with my favorite things and get to a place in my studio where I end up having one set of gouache. Even if the set of gouache has one tube from Windsor and Newton and one tube from Schmincke and one tube from Holbein, whatever it is, but one set, one version of each color from whatever my favorite brand is for that color, as opposed to several different versions of several different colors from several different brands. So those are the other brands that I think about and one day I'll try, but it just doesn't fit into my current strategy and plan of how to manage my art studio and manage my supplies. This opportunity to be able to try every single color and not just try it once, but make multiple paintings with a paint brand helps me so much because I'm able to decide, is this one of the ones that would make it back into the studio after it's used up? Would this be invited back in later? And it is really helpful to have 
several different brands that serve the same need in my artwork. So the vibrant color need. Recently when I did a toucan, I needed vibrant colors for that beak. And I was using my super granulating colors and I just turned right over to my Regina's because I needed the vibrant colors. And my super granulating paints aren't really for that. For th they're for the granulating effect. So it is really, really helpful for me to try all these different brands and all these different things to see what will serve this particular role in my studio long term. So these are the swatches for the Magello Mission Gold for all 34 colors. I think you can see from these swatches how just gorgeous and stunning these colors are. That sap green, the viridian, the ultramarine, even the greenish yellow, the Prussian blue, the cobalt blue I used almost immediately, and the cerulean in the first painting that I did with these, which is coming up next. This is a Korean watercolor company that makes these. And I have read on Kimberly Crick's uh, blog that she thinks the quality of this brand has gone down or she's not sure if it's that the quality of their competitors have gone up. But she used to say like this is a the set to get if you have a limited budget but you want a maximum amount of colors this would be the set to get. And she now says that like Roman Schmall and White Knights might be giving Magello a run for its money and Magello kind of needs to step it up if it wants to stay, you know, holding its crown in this game. I haven't tried those brands, so I can't compare to those. Um, but I have to say this experience of us using these felt very similar to the experience of using my Gonzai Tombies. Um, they don't really spread. You can see that here I'm using a ton of water and they kind of still stay where you put them. And that is really helpful for precision work. It is the opposite of what my super granulating colors do, which is if there's water, it's running over there to join that water. It's like on its feet and out of the gate, sprinting wherever the water is. <laughs> These colors don't do that. They allow you a lot more control. I thought that the colors worked together beautifully. I never got mud. Um, it was really easy to navigate the colors, especially with the pigment names. That really helped me understand, oh, this is a three pigment color. I'm not going to mix it with anything unless I want a neutral to be happening. <laughs> um, but I really loved painting this. This was based very loosely on a Pexels reference picture of a forest. And I ended up redoing this with my Turner or Krill gouache in my cheap sketchbook. And I loved it so much. So this is just a really fun landscape to paint. And I thought these watercolors did beautifully with this landscape. I really enjoyed the experience of using them. I really understood them, if that makes sense. They made sense to me what they would do and how they would work. They felt like an old friend because they do remind me of my Regina's, except those are more transparent um, and harder to get such concentrated color. It's actually very hard with Regina's to get the kind of color punch that you get with these with just like one stroke of the brush. These are so concentrated. So as far as looking for a vibrant go-to color paint, this would beat out Regina's watercolors for me, uh, even though I would still use the Regina's watercolor palette. That palette is now like indispensable. So if I refill that palette with something, these are definitely a contender. The Gonzai Tombies wouldn't work in that palette, but in the palette they come in, they would also fill this role a little bit better. They also are super vibrant like this without too much water. So like, if you look at this, look how much pigment, this is the perfect example. Look how long I'm dabbing this one dip and it's just going and going and going in full vibrancy, in full concentration. This is all from one dip of my brush into that color. I don't actually know of another paint where I could do that other than the Gonzai Tombi. So I think between this and the Gonzai Tombi, it's going to come down to, do you want it in a palette that has like a mixing space? Because with the Mission Gold, usually you buy the Magello bulletproof case, the bulletproof palette that kind of goes with it and you fill that up and then you can use the mixing space. Whereas with the Gonzai Tombies, they are in full pans that are oversized that don't really work in any other palette. I'm not actually aware of any Gonzai Tombi palette with a mixing space that you could use that you could transfer those full pans to. So if any of you are aware of something like that, let me know. But I just don't know how it would even work because those pans are huge, which is amazing because you get so much paint. Um, but with something like this, you have tubes so you could put it in whatever palette you want. I would probably get the palette that's made for it just because it has so much 
paint like it has so many different colors but there's nothing to stop you from getting a regular old 18 well and putting half pans in the middle like a lot of people do with the uh, the smaller 18 well Magello palette I really loved using these colors I'm looking forward to using this again and again I'm so glad that I transferred them to actual palettes that I can use over and over I also, by the way, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you how much I'm loving my Etcher sketchbook. This is in my hot pressed Etcher sketchbook, 220 gram, fully cotton, 100% cotton paper. And I've been liking this more than the cold pressed version that I had in an A5 size. This is the A4 size. I'm a cold pressed girl. I love cold pressed paper. I'm sh shook. I'm so shocked that I love this hot press better. So just, I don't know, I'm only a few, you know, several pages in. Maybe it'll change, but I doubt it. I really love this paper. I would definitely get the A5 portrait size of this in future. That's actually a plan of mine. So I really hope you enjoyed this review, my initial thoughts, my enrapturement, if that's a word, <laughs> at what this viewer did and what how over the top it is that she sent this to me and how much paint she sent me and how much fun it was to use. If you did enjoy this video, remember to leave a like. Check if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Leave a comment letting me know what you thought, if I missed anything. And until next time, remember, create something cute.